fellow Toastmasters and guests. Yeah. Raise your hand if you have or know a teenager who will be graduating from high school and going off to college in the next few years. A lot of you, okay. Well, as a relatively young adult, I went off to college fairly recently. If there's one piece of advice I could give to all the teenagers in your lives, it would be this. Do not go to Georgia Tech. That's right, I said it. I hate my alma mater. If I can save just one child from that hellhole, I'll feel as though the business of the will have been worth it. Tech puts its students in crowded classes at times they don't want to be there with professors they can't stand. Tech is a college, but their administrators run it as though it's the most maniacal corporation on earth, wringing every possible cent out of its students. And there is one event, which I'll mention shortly, which I will never forget from my time at Georgia Tech. Okay, first, let me tell you a little bit about professors at Georgia Tech. Tech is a research institute, meaning that its professors choose to focus on their research and neglect their teaching. Most of my professors showed up for class unprepared and late, if at all. They bumbled through their lectures, and if there was something in their PowerPoint slides they couldn't understand or get through, they would just assign it as homework so we could figure it out for ourselves. Um, and also, because Tech is such a great research institute, it gathers its teachers from all across the world, meaning that 80% of my professors had little to no grasp of the English language. I taught myself more in those six and a third years that I was there than I ever learned in a classroom. Now, let's talk a little bit about Tech's miserly finances. It cost about $600 for a parking pass at Georgia Tech per year. That wouldn't be so bad, except that there's not actually anywhere to park. A permit only restricts you to a small subset of the spaces. If you can't find a spot in your zone, you just park where you can, and the parking department will promptly give you a $40 ticket. After three tickets, your car is booted. I actually spent more in parking fines most of my time at Tech than I did on my actual permit. Also, Tech only exists because of its students. They don't seem to understand this. The facilities that are there for the student use are constantly being rented out to the highest bidder for special occasions. When some camp uses our basketball courts for the summer, guess who gets kicked out? Mm-hmm. Lost. One moment. Ah, okay. There's one area which tech is always going to spend. Construction. Tech's campus is a perpetual eyesore. Always, the major traffic arteries are always blocked due to construction. And it's just not fair that the students who have to put up with the construction of some new facility or road never get to enjoy it. They're gone by the time it's done. But Tech is always telling its prospective visiting students, look what will be here by the time you get here. <laughs> and it gets worse. When I was only a sophomore at Georgia Tech, I was elected president of the Georgia Tech Barbell Club. The Barbell Club was one of the largest organizations on campus. Um, as a member of the Barbell Club, you had 24-7, 365 key access to an exercise facility in the basement of the O'Keefe Gym. Sorry, you're getting lost here. Uh, unlike Tech's Campus Recreation Center, there were no rules at the Barbell Club. You could work out without a shirt, you could drop weights, you could use chalk. You could blast hard rock music as loudly as you wanted. It was every hardcore lifter's dream. Now, the club had recently taken $100,000 in membership dues and invested it, turned it into $125,000. As president, I took that money and I renovated the club, put in new floors, painted the entire facility, uh, reorganized the weights, optimizing them for position. It was a great time to be a Barbell Club member. But, Tech's administration decided to seize the basement of the O'Keefe Gym from the Barbell Club and give it to the women's volleyball team. They claimed it was a Title IX issue that they dressed in the Coliseum and played their games in O'Keefe. They said they preferred playing in a smaller facility because it you know, gave them a better home field advantage. It was a smaller area, more crowd noise. Never mind they were breaking various fire codes by crowding so many people into such a small space. Nevertheless, we lost, and a club that had been at Georgia Tech since World War II was dissolved. So, given all the horrors of Georgia Tech, why did I stay there? Why didn't I transfer somewhere else? I could have. But I decided to stay for several reasons. First, my first semester at Tech, I joined the Pi Kappa Alpha, or Pike Fraternity. The brothers there quickly became my closest friends. That same semester that I was elected president of the Barbell Club, 
I met a girl named Rachel who this summer became my wife, which is quite surprising given the text population is over 70% male. Um, seven of my eight groomsmen at my wedding were my fraternity brothers. Now, Ted tried to make my life with my fraternity and my girlfriend as miserable as possible. For the 13 semesters that I was an active brother, seven of them, we were on suspension or social probation. But, <laughs> however, the, the joy that Rachel and Pike brought to my lives was almost enough to make the misery that I went through worthwhile. So, I hope that I've convinced all of you here today that despite what you may have read in a Kaplan magazine or a U.S. News and War Report, Georgia Tech is a horrible place. If you let the teenagers in your lives go there, they will be miserable for the next five to seven years of their life. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs>